first chapter of Daniel. Yes, sir. I should have thanked the Lord for this, but I would like to thank him for grafting a wild olive branch into his, um, his vine. Yes. That's right. He would take Gentile people and add them to the promise he gave to Abraham. Yes. So thanks be to God for that. Amen. Yes, she is. He's been studying the book of Romans, hasn't he? Letter to the Romans. Daniel chapter number one. Let's just begin with verse number one. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God, and I would very much emphasize small g. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, well, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding, science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not be defiled, or, or he might not defile himself. My thought tonight is making biblical decisions in a Babylon world. We must make biblical decisions in this Babylon world. The setting is the Babylonians have come. They've invaded Jerusalem. They've overthrown the nation of Judah. And they've taken now a bunch of the young ones, teenagers, from Jerusalem and brought them back to Babylon some 900 miles away. Uh, anyway, they bring them to deprogram them. This first chapter emphasizes a deprogramming program uh, and then a reprogramming work that's going on f from this heathen uh, people, King Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. And we know the story. Daniel and his buddies take a stand and a biblical stand. They've got biblical thinking. They take a biblical stand in a world that's fighting against God and His Word and His ways. And that describes us in our day. We must take a biblical stand. We must have biblical thinking in a world that's doing its dead level best to Take it out of your mind, God's Word. 
Uh, and not only that, but then what happens is they strive to take it out of your practice. So that God is not governing anymore. And yet, what do we have? We still have religion. The third chapter, they're still bowing down and worshiping and doing all those kinds of things. The problem is, it's not God's religion. And it's not uh, God's people walking in God's truth. And so, let's look here and see uh, just three simple things out of the chapter tonight as we think about making biblical decisions in a Babylon world. There's the Babylonian brainwashing school. Verse 3 through 7, in those verses you'll find that there is that deprogramming, reprogramming work that takes place. Working to take God out of the mind. I thought about our country. There's an effort to try to rewrite history. You know, it, 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 and the best way to do it is just, uh, just quit talking about it. Let's not talk about our heritage or our forefathers or what we've gone through as a nation and the wars that have been fought and why they were fought and those kind of things. Let's not talk about any of that stuff. Rather, let's talk about who can go to the women's restroom. And all of that is a deprogramming. We're going to get your mind on all this other stuff, all this other stuff, and we want you to get your mind off of all of the other stuff that was had some kind of biblical foundation to it. You know, let, let's not. And that's where we're at. Similar situation to Daniel and his fellows in a Babylonian world that's going to try to reprogram, deprogram us. So there's this all out effort that's going on in our day to try to get us to adopt Marxist ideologies, socialism and communism and we've already lost the older that's why you can't do that till the older generation's off the scene because the older generation knew what communism was and knew what it creates the, and so somehow if we can just say, okay, the government's going to take care of everything for everybody, you know, and, and just get on board. And the younger generation, they don't watch out if they don't know about that back there. The older generation knows. And so the older generation had to get off the scene so that the younger generation could be brainwashed into believing something that's not true and blinded. So, uh, Nikita Khrushchev said, first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, and said it in 1956, we will take America without firing a shot. We do not have to invade the U.S. We will destroy you from within. That seems to be what the effort is right now. And it doesn't seem to be Russia. It looks like it's China. They're telling us of, they, they have police forces here. <laughs> Forcing people to do stuff in the cities. The Chinese is what they're saying. And all. So there's this effort to brainwash. Particularly the children in our day. So we have become a Babylonian brainwashing system. In modern day haven't we there are two things here um, what these young folks were before they came to Babylon and what Babylon wanted to make them after they came to Babylon in verse 3 and 4 their lineage is described their children these these Daniel Mishael Azariah Hananiah Azariah they, those guys are from the king's kids and the princes, the leaders of Judah. And they are now the ones that are picked and chosen uh, to come to Bab their lineage. Their looks are described. They, they were to be healthy and good looking, verse number four. That, that's the world's measuring stick, you know. We're going to go by what you look like. 
That's Hollywood's standard. That's the sports world's standard. It's almost an evolutionary thought. Survival of the fittest. We're not interested in the weak or the sick. We are interested only in the strong and the beautiful. That's the world's pick for our leaders. The looks are described. Verse 4, their learning is described. It says they're skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. They were smart kids. Smart, well-educated young folks. You know what that tells me? Here's one of my great concerns in our day. There is an all-out push to get everybody, including teenagers, to start smoking dope. There is. Oh, we're going to legalize it. We're going to make sure that every place, you can buy it anywhere, everywhere. We're, and there's this push. I told my son years ago, I said, I'll tell you what they're doing. From the outside, and it's outside people that are pushing it. They're going to get everybody on fentanyl, all, anything, everything, get, get to the place that you have a generation. You think it's going to be hard to take over a nation like that? They can't even get their head up out of the chair. Or, or they're so unmotivated from smoking pot. Whatever. Certainly not thinking clearly. It'd be easy for an enemy nation to take over that bunch. And then just let it flood through the southern border. Just, yeah, get it to all the major cities. and Let's get it to everybody. And hey, let's have a party. Everybody, leave everybody alone. Let them do their own thing. In the meantime, there's an undermining. That's going by. A damaging of America. There, there's, those who are in leadership are called to protect the peoples of this nation. And there's not a good effort at it. It looks like there's a deliberate, deliberate effort to undermine the peoples of this nation. Their learning is described. They were smart and educated. They were learners of truth. I wonder, are we? What, what Babylon wanted to make them is described in verse number 4 through 7. Uh, look, let's look at it. First, there's the emphasis of the change of language. The, they, Babylon wanted them to talk like them. Verse 4, midway the verse, said whom they've taken these young folks from Jewish young folks, Israelite, Ju Judean, Jerusalem young folks, and it says when they whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Learn their language. Learn to talk like them. There's Aramaic and Shemitic and Akkadian, three languages used in Babylon at that time. They wanted to get them to the place that they could talk like them. They wanted to get them to the place that they would believe like them. They taught them the learning of the Chaldees. And we're told that what they were about, they were about astronomy. Which in that day was also connected with astrology. And the stars were going, and planets were going to tell your future. And then they were involved in unbiblical ideas about origins and where we came from. Their own concocted ideas about where we came from. They were big on agriculture. They were known for the hanging gardens, one of the seven wonders of the world. The ancient world. And then they taught them how to eat and drink like them. 
Well, we want to make sure that you get the king's meat and the king's wine. What is all of that? An effort to try to change everything about them. They're talking, they're believing, they're eating, even down to the basics of their eating and their drinking, their food and their drink. What are they doing? They're trying to change their past and channel their future. I feel like that's what's going on tonight in the world. And, and you say, but, but where? Let me tell you, it's not in the Asiatic countries. China's not changing a bit. There's still strong-arm communist dictatorship. And their people are marching to the drumbeat, whatever it is. Or else, death or imprisonment with torture and reprogramming. They've got them. Reprogramming prisons. They're not changing. Are they? Are they? But something is going on in the USA. There's an effort to try to change us. And it comes through the Babylonian educational effort like this. They changed their names, which I've given you the list of the names. The, the Hebrew name, original Hebrew names, their original names their mother and father gave them. Then there's the other name that the Babylonians gave them. Over on the Hebrew side, uh, each name means something. Like two of them end with El, which is for Elohim. So they have the name of God. Their parents named them even with the name of God in their names. And then the other ends with A-H, which is Jehovah. They've got Jehovah. They've got Elohim. They've got the names of God in their, the true and living God, in their very names. And you see the list of what each one means. And then uh, the Babylonians, their brainwashing system is that those names have to be removed because we want, we, we want to remove everything about God. And we want to then rename them and uh, not only forget the true God, but we want to get them on board with what our agenda is. And get them marching to our drumbeat. Well, over here in Babylon, this is the way we do it. I know you've always done it that way. We're not doing it that way anymore. We're going to do it differently. And they give them the name of their false gods and ideologies. Uh, Daniel is renamed Belteshazzar, which means Baal protects his life. It's, it's to do with a false god. And then Hananiah is named Shadrach. The command of a coup. A coup is the moon god. Their moon god. Mishael is changed to uh, Meshach, who, which is who is what a coup is. Uh, Azariah is changed to Abednego. Abednego means servant of Nebo, who is the son of Baal, the son of a false god. See what they're doing? We're going to take all, all that you believe about God, get it out of your thinking, forget your roots, and now we're going to change it to what we're... Um, get on board with the program. Right? Created a new mindset. Creating a new type of worship. Creating a new society. Off with the old. On with the new. The only problem is Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and whoever else. They would not go along with the new. And they take a stand 
with a biblical mind in a Babylonian world. They do. Why? Because they love the true and living God. Because they knew the Holy Scriptures. If there's, that's what is needed in our generation. People who know the true and living God and love the true and living God and know His book. It's what's needed. It's the only thing that will insulate. Otherwise, the Bible says, Romans 12, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's, that word is be not pressured, be not formed, be not conformed to this world. Don't let it squeeze you into its mold. Don't let it make you what they want to make you. But make sure that you continue to be empowered and changed by the power of the Word of God and the God who gave the Word. I wasn't raised. You ought to thank God, young ones. You ought, you ought to thank God that you've got parents that, who've, that have raised you around the truth of the Word of God. Brother Dan, you ought to thank God that you was raised in a place where you got the Word of God consistently. Mom and Dad taught you the Word of God consistently. Listen, I wasn't. I came through, went 20 years of my life. Well, 17 was the first time I ever really anything at all impressed me, was impressed, impressed upon me about God and truth and about the Lord Jesus Christ and about how to be saved and that I could be saved, that I needed to be saved. That the Word of God was the Bible. God's revelation to us. I didn't know any of that. So you know what the result is? Well, yeah, you're doing what everybody else does. You're jumping on board with whatever anybody else is doing. Right? Seventh grade, starting basketball at Turner Junior High as a guard. Starting, I wasn't a center, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> Playing football. Halfback. Again, Turner Junior High. Freshman. We're at Turner at Junior High. You have all of this. What? Just whatever the world says. Whatever the world's doing. So the next thing you know, you've got to start tapping into some wine and some whiskey and some beer. Right? After all, my dad, for a period of time, was a, was a beer uh, distributor, involved in a beer distributorship. But why, would I, why would I think it's wrong? It's the way to go. Went to work with my uncle. He's a painter. Professional painter. And went, went to work. My mom was, I mean, she, so, she threw a fit. Because my mom didn't drink. She threw a fit. I came home that day after painting with him all day. And I was drunk as a skunk. Because he could drink beer from morning to night because he was accustomed to it. And still work. But he had a little upstart, 14 years of age, little upstart who's out there painting houses with him in the middle of the summer and comes home and can't even stand up. He has to help get me in the... My mom read him the right act. I'm telling you, she, she'd have killed him if she could have killed him. And so I was taught morals, some morality, but nothing spiritual. Whatsoever. Young folks, you ought to thank God that you're around the book of God. So what I do? Well, then you just jump on board. Well, what else is going on? Oh, in the 70s, it was music. So you got to learn to play guitar. And then you jump in a band. 
And next thing you know, we got a booking agent and we're going, we're traveling all over everywhere. Here we are under age. All of us are under age. But one of Joe's daddy, he had a he had the right, he's a mail carrier, rural mail carrier who also carried loads here, there, something. And he had the right vehicle. And so he took us all the time so we could get in. And they booked us to taverns here and there. All around everywhere. From Springfield to Macomb. And here and there and everywhere. What? Doing what everybody's doing. The world? What? Do you, no biblical mind. See, see where an absence of biblical mind will lead you? You'll be doing just what everybody else is doing. It's true. I met the nicest kid the other day. It just, I, and, and it shocked me. It just absolutely shocked me. He's not that old, the kid isn't. But he had so many tattoos just all around his neck and all down his arms and uh, everywhere. And this kid isn't even that old. But my first look at him and I thought, oh no, this, this kid's on meth. He, he's he's, he's got to be, you know. He, and yet whenever you talk, he's very respectful. Smart, a smart boy. Very smart. You know what he's doing? And I had to think about it. He's doing exactly what I would have done. Without a biblical mind. Without understanding the scripture. With almost no social conscience anymore. You know what I mean? So he's just doing what he's doing. What he does. He's following the fad. You say, well, what about if he gets saved? Well, the Son of God will, will receive him and forgive him and cleanse him and make him 100% right before God. But you know what? There'll still be issues that you have to deal with with it all. Because it'll be just like me, an old timer. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I'd ever say that, Ken. It'll be an old timer. And, and I'll come, and he's standing there, and I'm thinking, oh, he's rough as a cob. And then you get to talking with him, and he he's better than most of the 20-some-odd-year-olds that I know. You hear me? Why did I go all down that path? We were in Daniel 1. <laughs> were we? Uh, we need a Bible mind. And, and uh, young people, you young kids, you ought to thank God for parents who love you enough to want you to hear the Word of God and get it in your entire framework and make it your boundary in life. But even at that, know this. There is a world and a world system that's going to try to remove it from your thinking and replace it with their thinking. The Babylonian brainwashing school. Verse number 8 through 16. The believer's biblical stand. Um, Daniel had to make up his mind about what he was going to do. He's at a crossroads now in life where he has to decide what direction am I going? 
What am I going to do? He knows it's dangerous if he takes a stand. He could wind up in prison. He could wind up whipped and beaten. He could wind up in a fiery furnace. Oh, yeah, I think one of them, three of them did. It could bring trouble. Oh, well, just go along to get along. That's an easy mindset to take in our day, isn't it? Well, I, there's no need for me to do this because it's going to cause trouble for me. In the face of ill consequence, he still chose to go with God and leave the results with God. And we must as well. Daniel, verse 8, purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. What was the defilement? It wasn't toxins in his system. It wasn't his physical body that he was thinking about. He's thinking about God has given numerous places a direct word about what they were to do with meat and drink. There were meats that were forbidden. God forbade, forbade, forbode, for, help me somebody in English. The, told them not to have it. Certain meats, no camel, no rabbit, no pig, no shellfish, no lobster, no oysters, no clams, no crabs, no eagles, no buzzards, no bats, no owls, no swans, no rodents, no squirrels, no reptiles, no frog legs, and the list goes on. <laughs> Man, they couldn't have anything, could they? <laughs> huh? Uh, I don't know what kinds. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But God had that prohibition on Israel. I am thankful for New Testament revelation. Amen. Said that meats are to be received with prayer and thanksgiving. Lord, will you, will you bless this bacon that comes from this pig that you prohibited in the Old Testament? Because I think I'm interested in a BLT. And so God does, uh, yeah, anyway, the main point is that Daniel knew the word of God and was more than anything in the world wanting to obey the word of God. And that's where our hearts have to be. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat and the king's wine. He purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself. And he's not talking. What he's, he's concerned about is getting defiled before God. Not defiled by meat or wine or what he's drinking and these kinds of things. But it had to do with his relationship with God. And he was utmost concerned that he obey, that he be obedient. That's what we need to be. Yeah. Obedient. Wanting to obey. Wanting to protect ourselves from uh, defilement before God. He takes a stand. And then I note that in verse 8 that he doesn't, the second part, he doesn't go into the authorities disrespectfully or smart alecky. He, he makes an appeal. He comes with the right spirit and uh, he's not bossing anybody around and that kind of stuff. He just goes in with an appeal and a request and he mentions his scriptural position and conviction and he just goes that way. And God works. Verse 9 in Daniel's situation, God honors Daniel by giving him the heart of 
the one who's over the eunuchs, right? And gives the heart of the one he has to make the appeal to when he takes a stand. Daniel makes a suggestion that the eunuch, the leader of the eunuch, he's concerned about it. He's afraid the king's going to get him. And Daniel says, how about let's go for 10 days and just we will eat water and pulse for 10 days and see if we look still look good after that period of time. Then and he says, all right, that'll work out. And it works out and they are healthier. They're, they're fatter and fitter than those who are eating and drinking regularly. So he takes a stand. And they're able to opt out of the Babylonian program. Oh, it's good to opt out of the Babylonian program tonight, isn't it? Finally, verse 17 through 21, the last part of the chapter, the believer's blessing shows. God blessed these teenagers. Look at verse number 17. As for these four children, it's children, but they're actually, they're they're teenagers God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the Babylonian magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus, which is uh, 60, 70 years, he continued in the kingdom. God, God gave them special perception. God gave them special promotion. God gave them special protection. Daniel and his friends who faced a, biblical, a Babylonian world with a biblical mind. God blessed them. God helped them. God used them. You say, well, what if, what if the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to burn in the fire? They had already made up their mind. They said, it's all right. We're going to heaven if, if we do. But you'll know this, that we're going to do what God told us. And we must be a people of that kind of conviction. Um... And there are those people on this planet. I don't remember uh, the, the particular number, but uh, I listened to Brother Bagwell's piece on the book of the Revelation. Excellent series. The, uh, I believe it was yesterday's. And at the conclusion, he tells of records that he has about how many people are martyred regularly on this planet for standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's an unbelievable number. And it's in over in the Asiatic world and over in Muslim-based world and, and other places. People are dying tonight for the gospel because they're standing for God's truth. Us in comfortable America need to hear that. Because the truth of the matter is, it has not cost us that much to be a Bible believer or to come to the church tonight. We didn't have to sneak around like they do in Russia or China or other places in Africa. Here we had all of our liberties. 
But it may come a day in a Babylon world where they're going to require of you to be deprogrammed and reprogrammed. The gradual process is going on right now. But there may come a point whenever they'll draw a line. I, I pray that it'll not happen. I pray that it won't happen. So that there is uh, some kind of soundness for our young people in the future. And we ought to pray to that end. That God would turn it back and and he can. And he's done it at varied times. He can do it again. But it'll come by somebody that'll take a stand. Making biblical decisions in this world. You say, would God undertake for them? God did the miraculous for Daniel. Daniel 6. Should have been eaten by lions. Right? God protected it miraculously. God protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego miraculously, Daniel 3. So, all of us tonight are at the crossroad. Daniel came to a crossroad in life. What, what are you going to choose? Daniel said, I purpose in my heart that I will not defile myself by what the world's offering. But I'm striving to love, surrender, obey the true and living God. To worship the true God. What about your heart tonight? Let's stand. You say, I've already compromised. Our Savior's given us promise and direction about what to do if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us of our all unrighteousness, cleanse us. What about it tonight? You say, I just don't have the courage to stand. God can give it to you. He gave it to Daniel. Are you saved tonight? 
Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins? Have you come to him like an old worldly Babylonian? And said, Lord, I don't want to be this anymore. I remember it. I don't want to be this anymore. Change me. Cleanse me. Then you found him real in your life. Is he real in your life? Can he scott dismiss me?